Okay, so yeah, we'll be talking about how to unlock ETL and analytics on Ray. Um, at Eventual, we've been building a framework called Daft. It's a unified data engine for data engineering, analytics, and ML and AI, right? So let's dive right into it. So what is Ray? I would argue that Ray is an ecosystem. It's not just a library or a cluster framework, right? With Ray, you have Ray Core that lets you leverage the power of a cluster of machines, but you also have a very powerful library uh, of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have powerful libraries in the ecosystem like Ray Train, Ray Tune, Ray Data, and each of these built really good abstractions around Ray Core for you. Unfortunately, ETL and analytics have always kind of been an outsider. Uh, if you look at the Ray documentation for Ray Data, Ray Data says, hey, we don't have a SQL interface. We are not meant as a replacement for Apache Spark, right? And that's from the Ray forums. Ray is not meant as a, gen as a generic ETL tool. And the reason for this is because you, know, you don't have joins, you don't have group by aggregations, and you don't have all the good stuff in like SQL. You don't have all the good stuff you want from your ETL analytical tools, right? And so, hands up if your stack looks like this. You have your ML AI infrastructure all sexy and, you know, and Ray. And then you have your oh, ETL analytics infrastructure on the other side. at Spark, Trino, maybe you're a Databricks customer, a Snowflake customer. And the only way your teams talk is by dumping data into S3. Right? You dump parquet files in the middle. And the problem is then that a technological difference becomes an organizational difference. All of a sudden, your teams can no, can no longer speak the same language. And shipping something means dumping data to the cloud, which is horrible for iteration speeds. So here's the solution that we propose, which is, hey, this ecosystem is really great, but how about we just have a library that works with Ray Core and can do ETL and analytics? And that's Daft, right? So Daft supports both a Python and SQL interface. And uh, with Python, you have full access to you know, UDFs. You can run models. You can run models on GPUs. But you also have all the expressiv expressivity of SQL if you need to. And so you get sorts, you get joins, you get group by, ags, everything. And that means you have one cluster that can kind of do it all, right? It's great. So let's talk more showing. I'm going to try to do a live demo. Pray to the demo gods. The internet here has not been great, but we will see. So first thing I'm going to do, um, I will run Ray complete, uh, sorry, I'll run Daft completely on my laptop. So this is all running on my laptop. Imagine you're running like Pandas or Polar, something like that. You're like an uh, iterative developer, you know, a data scientist, right? So we want to talk about data analysts, data engineering, and AI ML engineering. The first thing we will show is that Daft is super easy. Just import Daft. Here I'm reading Delta Lake, but you could be reading Parquet, you could be reading JSON, CSV, doesn't really matter. Uh, you show a couple of rows of the file, you know, very familiar. This is a data frame, there's rows and columns, super easy to work with. Now, imagine you're a data analyst. You're like, oh, I don't want to do Python, I want to do SQL, right? You're super opinionated, like, give me my SQL. Uh, interestingly, today, we just launched Dev SQL. Uh, data analysts just want SQL. Give the people what they want, right? So, oh yeah, clap, 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 let's go. Um, here we go, dev.sql, run it. Oh, sure. this is counting the number of rows, sure. We also support the full suite of Daft operations. Like you can run explodes on uh, list columns, right? And so now you get you know, like these powerful expressions that you can run both through Python and through SQL. Um, cool, hands up if you're a data engineer. I see a couple. All right, you love data frames, right? You want the flexibility of Python. You want to be able to run models. You want to download data from URLs. Maybe you have a million URLs pointing out to images. This is what that looks like. So imagine you have that same uh, data frame. Now I have a new image URL column. These are all S3 URLs, if you can't see from the back. And now uh, these are images. How do I go from URLs to images? Dav makes it super easy. You just call .url.download. That gives you a new binary column. And then you call .image.decode. That gives you a new image column. Voila, you're done. Uh, you have image decode, uh, and then you have image resize, and then we're converting it to tensors. And let's run this. And in, what was that, like three lines of code? Bam, right? Image URL to images to tensors. That was data engineering in a nutshell. Imagine how long, how many times have I written Boto3 code to like download data from S3 and try to make that efficient in Spark? Painful. Um, yeah, and then now I want to run a model. So you don't really have to read this code. 
but this is a UDF, very similar to a Ray Data UDF if you've used those. It's going to classify my images, and to run it, I just call it like this, classify my image on the array column in the data that I just had. And now show me a couple of rows. And there we go. That was batch inference, right? Uh, I've just ran my model on this column, and it produces rock, python, ski. It's actually pretty good. A cradle, ice cream. Oh, it got it wrong. Um, but yeah, so that's how easy it is to go from this like SQL interface to running models to then maybe get diving back into aggregations. And of course, um, you know, we can do many more things. You can run models on GPUs. You can specify how many GPUs you need. You can specify how many instances you want to run it on. Uh, we can also, we also support all the big table formats like Iceberg, Delta Lake, et cetera. All right, last of all, very quickly, ML AI engineers in the crowd, raise your hand. Oh, many, many, many of you. You want data loaders, right? I'm like, I just want to feed my models. I want to run it fast. I want to you know, load my models in GPU. How does Zaf do that? All you do, say iter rows, and then every time you iterate, we give you, with extremely high performance, uh, your tensors. That's all you wanted. I just want to get my tensors. right? I just want to feed it into my PyTorch uh, uh, you know, CUDA tensors and feed it into GPUs. Sure, if you want the full power of the Ray ecosystem, two Ray data set. We do that as well. And you get the full power of the Ray ecosystem. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you, so all this was running locally on my machine, but uh, here's a cool tool we just built. It's called the Daft Launcher. And we let you launch clusters really, really easily with Daft until I, here I have a couple of clusters running. Right? These are running. And I, all I did was Daft up, and that launched the cluster in like 30 seconds. And now I do Daft connect. And now I will be connected to my cluster. And instead of having to uh, run everything on my laptop in this notebook, all I need to do is change this one line and now say, set runner to Ray, right? and just point it to cluster. And now Daft will run on the cluster instead of your local machine. Voila, super easy. Also, if you want to you know, submit a job, that's what it looks like, Daft submit. I'm actually submitting a SQL query here as a job, pretty spicy. Uh, you run this, and we will package it all up, send it up to the cluster, and it just runs on the cluster with the full power of the cluster that you just spun up. Did I run it? Oh, I did. OK, there we go. Yeah, so it's running like a submission process, and it will eventually finish. Um, yeah, and there you go. Super easy. Right? Now you have a fully featured ETL analytical solution all running on Ray with no external dependencies except for Daft. All right, uh, let's go back to the slides. Um, so yeah, how do you get started? Do pip install get daft to install daft itself. You can also pip install daft launcher. That's the launching thing I just showed you. Um, all you need to do is daft up to like spin up clusters, daft list, daft submit to you know, submit uh, to a uh, cluster, and then daft down to spin it back down. The fun thing is we are open sourcing this. I'm going to pull a mate today. I am going to click this and make it public. Let's make this repo public. So daft launcher is going to be open source. Change visibility. Does it work? It's a drop down? I can't see. Oh, I see it. Thank you. I want to make the repo public. I understand. There we go. Oh, security key. Oh, horrible. It doesn't let me do it. All right, you get the idea, though. It's fine. <laughs> All right, I'll do it later. Um, it's a lightning talk. I got I to gotta hurry up. All right, so why Daft? It's fast, written in Rust for the cloud, with uh, native integrations with S3 and Parquet. It's extremely fast for S3 and Parquet. It's multimodal. If you're working with tensors, images, embeddings, it works super good with that. Uh, it scales, right? Locally, it's super snappy. It's like DuckDB. It's like Polars. But when you need it to scale, it scales like Spark, which is amazing. And as a bonus, we're at the Ray Summit. You have one cluster to rule them all. You run Ray, we run on Ray. Uh, benchmarks, very quickly, you're obviously a lot faster than Spark and faster than Dask and, and all that good stuff. Um, why? Because we wrote a lot of the native I.O. in Rust. And also, we have vectorized kernels. And we have uh, pretty good, always improving qu uh, query planning. Uh, lastly, roadmap. So we are working on our streaming execution engine. Uh, the tagline here is less oom, more zoom, less oom, more zoom, less oom, more zoom, right? Uh, and the next thing we're working on is shuffles. Shuffles are always difficult in a distributed system. 
Uh, so we're working very hard to make that super stable. AQE, if you're familiar, means that we can do runtime optimizations as we run on data. And the last thing is we're trying to get to Spark SQL parity. And so if you're a Spark user who's currently using Spark, want to use Ray for your stuff, come talk to us. We'd love to chat. Um, get in touch with us. We're hiring. And let's work together. Here are some of our current users. If you'd like to join the ranks of Amazon, Cloud Kitchens, Together AI, uh, we're working on really, really cool AI ML workloads and data sets with these companies. Uh, we'd love to chat and see if we can work together. Uh, that's my email at the bottom. It's j at eventualcomputing.com. Um, yeah, reach out. I'm looking forward to hear from you all. Uh, we actually just made it public. Uh, my engineer managed to do it. Yeah.